Now, um, let me go ahead and play it on something else, actually. Well, let me go ahead and uh, I've got some uh, surround sound content here. And uh, let me go ahead and I'll pick, uh, I'll pick home theater for that. Home theater is wired into the surround. We put a few extra surround speakers around the room so you can just hear the surround sound. Here's the, the intro that's uh, played in movie theaters that we got from them. So you can just hear that. Let's see. That's enough. This has got some nice surround sound content too. Anyway, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Okay, thanks. Sure. So this doesn't solve every problem in the world. It, it doesn't connect to your television and send video over anything else. It solves a begins to solve a very simple problem for $129, or if you need a base station anyway, for zero dollars. <laughs> because it's just an add-on function yeah. on the base station. Um, why doesn't, why aren't you in, in the business of sending video at the moment? Is it because you don't think people care about it, or you yeah. just didn't have the time to develop it in here? Or well, what? we think there's a lot of technical... you certainly have, I mean, you have iMovie on the Mac, you have mm -hmm. things that are perfectly capable of dealing with video quick time. You know, I think, um, part of the hardest thing about coming up with new products is to figure out a really cool set of technologies that you can implement it with and make it easy, but also figuring out something that people um, want to do. You know, we all, we've all seen products that have come out that have been interesting but just fallen on their face because not enough people want to do them. And I think what we're, we know that a lot of people want to take music from their computer to their stereo. So we're going to take that step and we're going to learn a lot. Uh, we're not hearing that a lot of people want to take, you know, movies that they've bought or, you know, somehow gotten off the internet and put them on their television. Does that mean, yes. you, does that mean you risk being late? I mean, you were late on music. Uh, you've done okay since then, but you were late on music. <laughs> but we, 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 we want to make them cheaper still. I mean, we're not happy with iPods costing, you know, three and four hundred dollars and we want to keep driving the prices down on them. So we're working very hard on that. How low can the price of an, of an iPod with the quality you want and all of that go? Um, I don't know, but we're working hard on it. I do have to say, I should say publicly since he's on the, on the stage, when he brought out the iPod mini at 249, I wrote a column that basically said, this is a really nice device, but it's $50 too expensive, and I'm not sure people will snap them up, and that was really wrong. Basically, you can't find one in the stores. We're making them as fast as we can. Is that because there's a shortage of the, of the components, or? Well, there's not a shortage of anything. There's exactly what we planned. It's just the demand is much bigger, and we can only ramp up the factory so fast on the hard drives. So, so you're, in, you're, you're feeling quite good about the music thing right now in terms of your market share for the players and the stores, but aren't you headed for real trouble? You can't possibly believe that Microsoft will have no impact on this when they bring their store out. Maybe you want to say that, they'll have no impact. I assume they'll have some impact. Most people assume they'll have oh, some impact. Oh, I think they'll have a lot of impact. If you're, if you're rock CEO or music match, you're going to get destroyed. They're going to eat their young. So, you know, Actually, basically... Uh, Dennis Mudd, the CEO of music match, is out here, so... You know, that's one thing they're going to do, and it will be painful to watch. Um, the, the other thing... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The other thing, uh, though, that, that you said is you said, you know, you're selling lots of iPods, you're, you're feeling good. Actually, to be honest, the, the reason we're feeling great is because the iPod and the iTunes Music Store have caused so many people to rediscover music again. And one of the reasons we did this is we love music. We love music. And it's cool. This is altruism? No. It's that we love music. You know? And, and uh, it's great. You said uh, earlier in this conversation, you pointed out the truth that you haven't had great success in selling to corporations. Mm -hmm. um, you do have some products in that area. You do have some, some servers and, yeah. and so forth. We're doing forth. pretty well with them, too, for, I mean, for us. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. I mean, why bother? I mean, it, 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 is, is there really a significant opportunity for you, or you shouldn't know, you just admit that you're basically a, a company that sells to consumers and prosumers, and that's it? Well, you know, our prosumers are what got us into the servers and the storage. I mean, we make a really kick-ass server with G5s in it, and we make this uh, thing called XServe, which is uh, 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 RAID storage, which is like, you know, half to a third of the price per gigabyte that Dell sells 
server st the storage. Yeah, for. but they sell a lot of servers, and you don't, right? So what's the secret? Well, it's all relative. You know, I mean, we started from zero, and we we've actually surprised ourselves with how many we've sold. So who knows where it goes? But it is worth continuing to try oh, yeah. and invest in. You think? Sure. In a significant sure. way. You know, we've got we're, we're very lucky in that we've got a successful, profitable business. We innovated our way through the downturn, and we have a lot of you know a lot of engineering groups doing some really fun stuff. And we've got you know almost five billion dollars of cash in the bank and no debt, so we have the resources to you know to to, to do a few of these things and 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 keep at them and see if we can uh, do a good job. Let me ask about you personally. You're a very unusual in that you're the CEO of two hot companies, really Apple and Pixar. You had uh, a huge success with Finding Nemo. I don't remember it, it, if it's is it still a, was it the box office champ last year? Three hundred and thirty nine million. It was the most successful animated film in history. Uh, Shrek two may pass it, um, but so far hasn't. And uh, uh, you won. An, uh, did you win an Oscar for that? Yeah, or? won an Academy Award for it. So how do you divide your time between these two companies? No, so, I mean, tell me, how much of your time do you spend at each one? You know, we're, we're, did you go there you know, Thursday and Friday, and you go to Apple Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday? I mean, how do you do it? A little something like that, but there's email and you know, things like that. So I'm, I'm in touch pretty much all the time. It, it all depends. When we have a movie coming out of Pixar, I'm there more, but I don't direct the movies. So, uh, Would you like to direct someday? No. Okay. <laughs> no, the talent we have at Pixar is off the charts. It's just it's mind-blowing. And um, it's a privilege to hang around with these guys. And it's just, it, you know how when you, you go see David in the Academy in, you know, in Florence, and you, uh -huh. you think, how could a human have done that? That's what I think every time I'm at Pixar. How could humans do this? Because these films are all handmade. I mean, they use the most powerful pencils in the world, but, but basically they're handmade. And, and the technology there and the artistry there is, is just mind-blowing. Last year you talked, because you have this dual experience, you talked, I think many people were fascinated about the differences in personality and the nature of creative people and technology people. Uh, it's a year later. Do you see any more kind of comedy there, any more coming together of those cultures? Yeah, a little bit, but, but it's slow going because they don't understand each other at all. I mean, I was at a meeting. I, Carly was at the meeting, too. We were down with the Hollywood studio heads invited several people down, Steve Ballmer, Carly, myself, and others, to talk about this whole uh, piracy issue with, with Hollywood, because they are trying to get ahead of the curve and figure out what to do. But there's a, there's a pretty big gulf there. And, and it's, you know, it's great that those things take place, but it's, it's, you know, there's a big gulf. And the, the, the attitude problem is on both sides? No, I don't think there's an attitude problem. There's just a, an experience problem. You know, the, the people from technology don't understand the creative process that, that, that these companies go through to make their products, and they don't appreciate how hard it is. Uh, and the, the creative companies don't appreciate how creative technology is. They think it's just something you buy. Um, and, and so there, there's a, a, a gulf of understanding between the two of them. Do the, do the people that you deal with in the movie and music industries, uh, are they individually actually users of the internet, users of computers to the same degree that people in other businesses are and other positions are? Large dynamic range. But how about the people that really run these companies? Large dynamic range. Large dynamic yeah. range. Yeah. Now, you know, some of the, the smartest guys, like one of the smartest guys I've met in the music business is Doug Morris, who runs Universal, right? I don't think he's ever touched a computer. Right? You send him an email, his secretary prints it out and hands it to him. Uh, but he's one of the smartest guys about online music there is. So I don't know that there's even a correlation there. Okay. Uh, we have time for a few questions for Steve. Um, do we ha have the lights up so I can see? Stuart. If you'd uh, allow me, I'd like to ask two questions. The first one's real quick. What's the range on Air Airport Express? 50? Yeah, 50 feet. I'm trying to figure 50 out feet how, or meters. I'm trying to figure out how many I need for my 50. house. <laughs> 50 meters. So you were describing... By uh, two. You were describing iPod. <laughs> <laughs> do they many, only come in white? In but are they only white? They're only white. You can't yeah. get pink or no. Any of those colors? Okay. You were describing uh, uh, devices, uh, particularly iPod and, and, uh, and uh, uh, digital cameras, as you know, the, the computer's a place to store all your stuff. And I think, how many people? I've seen so many of them. How many people have a have a trio here in this audience? I don't know. There's a fair number of them here. Um, that's exactly how I use this device, and, it, and you know, I, 
whatever you think about Palm and uh, you know their history and, and where they've ended up with this device, I certainly would love to get one of these from Apple. So I, I guess I'd just say, can, is there any way you can get over your your feelings about the carriers? Maybe you should you know visit with Ivan a little later and, well, we've, and see we've if visited you can get with along. the handset manufacturers and we've talked to the Trio guys and they tell us horror stories. <laughs> well, I'm just uh, telling you that I would love it if Apple would. But we have a tr so. but you have a Trio. A Trio. So why do we have to make one? They make a good one. Well, we, buy, buy, buy Palm then and, and make them well run. <laughs> Larry? Yeah, Steve Larry Maggot. Um, this is going to go over a little bit of ground you and Walt did, but uh, in 1981, I took all my data from my Apple II and I moved it over to my IBM PC. 1984, I moved it all over from my IBM PC to my Apple Macintosh. Yeah. And since then, I've moved it back and forth between my Macintosh, my Windows machines, and even Linux machines. And the experience has been great, and it's one of the reasons why I continue to buy more Macs and more Windows machines. And it seems to me everybody benefits, including people I share information with. As Walt pointed out, I can't do that with my music. Sure you can. Not really. I have music that I listen to on my iPod, and I have music that I can listen to on my, on my Rio. And some of the songs, the MP3 songs, I can move back and forth. There are anything that I pirated, I can move back and forth easily. But the stuff that I bought legitimately, <laughs> right? The stuff I buy legitimately, which is sure. virtually everything, I cannot move <laughs> back and forth. So, so basically, I have a technological incentive to pirate. It is, it is a or or rip a ripped product sure. or a pirated product is a better product because I can move it back and forth between my Windows compatible music players and my you know, uh -huh. iPod, and that's not serving me as a consumer. Well, two or three things. Number one, we've gone to the trouble of putting iTunes on Windows. Good. Um, some people think it's the best Windows app ever written. Um, and so you can have iTunes on Windows. Secondly, all you have to do is chuck that Rio and get an iPod well, Mini. But that's not the way the world works. I mean, what people want is the ability to well, not be hostage to a single company with their data. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but but... It is the way the world's working right now. Right now. With the market shares of 52% on the iPod, including all the flash players that never get used. If you look at the Rio hard disk players, their market share is in single digits. Mm -hmm. So um, that kind is. Kind of like apples in computers, right? Yes, like apples in computers. Yeah. Well. Feels good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Up you. on the risers. Uh, <clears throat> Ramey Stata. Um, I make uh, desktop software, and let me ask you a question I get all the time, kind of study from the master, and it's, it's uh, along the lines of what Walt was saying about the future of PCs, um, you know, and let's look out five years. Um, you know, you said that, well, you want to store your pictures and your music and this and that on the PC, and the, and the comeback I always get is, well, what about the internet? You know, it'll all be up on the internet, so we'll have kind of devices, dumb terminals, because, of course, sometimes you want the big screen, and. Um, and lots of devices and everything will be on the internet and so desktop software in particular, de desktop PCs will become kind of a thing of the past. Well, that's not exactly what's happened, thank God. Um, what's happened is, is that uh, data is exploding. So, uh, you know, not only does music take, you know, four megabytes a song, um, but, but digital photography you know, is taking a few megabytes of picture and they're really easy to click and take and we've got now thousands of them. When we started off with iPhoto, you know, the average person, thousand pictures was a lot. Now for the average person, five, you know, they got 5,000 pictures. And to upload these all on a server, even with DSL or, or, or a cable modem, uh, it takes a long time. You end up wanting to have that data locally right on your desk if you want to scroll through your photos and pick one. Of course, you know, when you get into video, it's even, it's even you know, larger data sets. So the data has kept ahead of the bandwidth to the extent that when you really want to use data quickly, uh, like scroll through your pictures, et cetera, you really have to have it locally. And, and this whole notion that we're going to have these dumb terminals and our data is going to be stored in the ether just hasn't happened because of the bandwidth to data ratio. And there's, we see no signs of that changing. 